I'm not a lawyer, but this is the day six Karen Reed trial recap. So Sergeant Good is still on the witness stand and Karen Reed's defense team is doing cross-examination. They are asking about his police report from the day of the incident because apparently there are two reports. Uh, that is the photo of the piece of taillight allegedly found at 34 Fairview that you have identified as Exhibit 42, correct? Yes. All right. Sergeant Good, you have previously testified about the details in these reports. Uh, you would agree that each of these reflects your report. It says reporting officer uh, Sergeant Sean Good, correct? Yes. Sir. Each of these has the identical incident number and call number, correct? Yes. The identical date and time reported, correct? Yes. The identical report date and time, correct? Yes. The major change is the photo that's included on the face sheet, correct? Yes. Can I explain why? Uh, so that second photo with the piece of taillight that is included on the first page of your report, uh, that photo is not from January 29th of 2022, correct? Correct. You never took a photo of a piece of taillight on January 29th of 2022, correct? Correct. Did you personally switch the photo on the face sheet of your police report? No. So whoever updated the report, their supplemental, you add photos. Uh, but you, when, in answer to my question, do you, do you know the specific person from your department who altered the photo on the face sheet of your report? I didn't take the supplemental report, so I don't know. Okay. Date and time of the report is listed as January 29th of 2022 at 8.24 a.m. Uh, somebody reading that and seeing a photo of a piece of taillight might believe that that photo is from the same date that you're writing the report, correct? Objection. Sustained. The prosecutors do some redirect, which allows Sergeant Good to explain a little further about why there's a difference between the reports. In this case, there was supplemental reports done after the 29th. Um, so those reports were added to my initial report. You can add a supplemental narrative. Um, so if that includes meeting new people, talking to other people, or taking photos of anything you found, you would add that to our report. When that uh, face sheet was printed, if photo number one was the top photo, and now there's a new photo added, that could be now the top photo on that face sheet when it was printed. Um, and how would that, would that be something that someone would physically go in and do, or is that something that sort of within the system automatically occurs? You know? I don't know how the system numbers the, the, the photos. So we added our, our photos on January 29th, and then any photos subsequent to that were added. I don't know how the software would we put them one through 20 or how many there were. Next up is Lieutenant Michael Lank. And if you remember, Michael Lank was off duty when the incident happened, but but Sean Good called him to come in. So Michael Lank is asked about his relationship with the Albert family, as well as when the pieces of red taillight were discovered in front of the Albert's house. Now, Brian Albert, is that someone that you knew prior to January 29, 2022? Yes, I knew him as uh, the oldest of the Albert brothers. Describe your relationship with Brian Albert prior to that January 29, 2022. Civil. Now, if I could turn your attention to uh, February 4th of 2022. Were you working on that day? I was. Lieutenant, <clears throat> excuse me, Lieutenant Gallagher directed me to go back to 34 Fairview Road and meet with Chief Berkowitz as he had possibly uh, discovered more evidence. A lot of the snow had melted and a lot of the ground had been revealed. Uh, Chief Berkowitz brought my attention to a piece of uh, red glass that was about six to six to eight feet off the, uh, into the yard. The glass was in the vicinity of where uh, Mr. O'Keefe had been discovered. I contacted the CPAC unit and uh, ultimately, uh, Trooper Buchanan arrived back at the scene. Trooper Buchanan uh, secured the item into a uh, evidence bag. And, uh, sir, do you again recognize what's up on screen? Yes, that's a uh, closer up, close up picture of the piece of plastic. And now for Cross. Do you know any other members of the Albert family other than Brian Albert? Kevin Albert, who is a detective on our department. Uh, Chris Albert, and uh, I, I know Tim Albert. Are those three individuals brothers? Yes. Albert, how long have you known Tim Albert? I knew Tim Albert when he was a... Uh, a kid because he was friends with a younger brother of a friend of mine. He, he was 12. I was probably 16 or so. And what about Chris Albert? Chris Albert I've known since junior high, 13, 14. You grew up 12, with Chris? 12, 13. I was friendly with Chris from junior high through high school and into our 20s. And friendly with Tim? I, I wouldn't say I was, I, I, I was friendly to say hello to Tim. I didn't associate with him. He was younger. He was Chris's younger brother. But you also knew Chris's older brother, Brian? Yes. I knew who he was. So you've known the three of them for basically the, the, your entire life? No. I had met them. I had met Brian. I didn't know him other than just being Chris's older brother when we were younger kids. Certainly with regard to Chris, you would consider him a close friend. I'm yes. First names only because they're all Sure, the sure. Uh, Chris and I were pretty good friends uh, when we were younger, yes. I want to draw your attention to an incident in August of 2002 that involved Chris Albert. Yes. Um, in August of 2002 specifically, you were off duty, correct? Yes. You had been drinking alcohol, correct? Yes. Uh, you were approached by Chris Albert out in the parking lot, is that right? 
That's correct. And Chris Albert told you some information about being in a fight. He told me he had been in an altercation earlier in the night and some threats had been made to him and his family. Okay. At some point, did some other individuals approach that same area? Yes. Was there a fight that you believed was about to ensue? Yes. Did you get out of your car at that point? I did. Did you come to Chris's aid by, quote unquote, activating yourself as an officer? I got out of my car and I approached the group and I pleaded with them to not fight tonight. I said, there's not going to be a fight tonight. There's six of you guys. He's here with his girlfriend. There's not going to be a fight tonight. I came to the aid of a citizen who was in fear and of need. That citizen happened to be Chris Albert, whom you had known since you were 12 years old. Correct. Ultimately, a fight did break out, did it not? Yes. And you engaged in that fight? Yes. And again, you had been drinking alcohol at that point, correct? Correct. Uh, and you were off duty? Yes. Just like you were off duty in 2022 when you were called by Sergeant Good to activate and come to the crime scene at 34 Fairview. When Sergeant Good contacted me, I was not working. I was due to work at 7.45 that morning. Contacted me and told me what, what was going on. Then I activated myself and came to work because I was the detective sergeant. Activated myself is sending me. And that's a similar sort of activation, using that word in air quotes, a similar sort of activation that you employed back in 2002 to assist Chris Albert. No. Okay. And I, I failed to ask you this, but in 2002, you were in fact a camp police officer. Yes. At the time. Um, after the other officers arrived, ultimately did you see whether or not those officers handcuffed or otherwise restrained one of the brothers that was involved in this fight? Yes. You did in fact engage in a physical fight with one of the brothers, correct? Upon being struck, yes. One of the brothers left the scene, fled the scene, and the brother that was restrained was ultimately uncuffed and, and left uh, free to go. And nobody was arrested that night? Correct. And no police reports were written by you or any of the other officers about this incident on that night? I don't recall when the other officers wrote theirs. I did not write mine on that night. The next day, you became aware that one or both of the brothers had arrived at Canton Police Department to file a formal complaint for having been physically attacked by you and some of the other officers involved, correct? It was brought to my attention that they had come down to the police station. And you also are aware that only after that complaint had been sought, the police reports were then dated and filed against the two brothers, correct? I'm seeking the, the chronology of events. The fight occurs, a complaint against you occurs, and then police reports are filed against the two people that, that are complaining against you. Is that the chronology? Yes. And you're also aware that although he had been in a physical fight that night, no charges were ever brought against Chris Albert, correct? I, I don't know. I don't even know where the fight occurred. Officer Lang, what we just talked about, is that an example of you using your position as a police officer to come to the aid of one of the members of the Albert family? It was me coming to the aid of a citizen who was terrified and scared for him and his family on that night. Who happened to who be happened, what? Excuse me, who happened to be Chris Albert. You mentioned Kevin Albert, who is he? Kevin Albert is a detective with the Canton Police. And you also consider him to be a friend as well as a co-worker? I do. And a colleague? Yes. And you're also well, well aware, I mean you've said it already, he's the brother of, little brother of Brian Albert. Correct. And now I want to fast forward to the incident in question. Did you know at the time you got the call that that very serious incident was occurring at 34 Fairview? No. When did you realize that? Did a light bulb go off and you think to yourself, ding, that's the, that's the Albert house? I don't recall if I realized it then or once I turned onto the street, I don't, I don't recall. <laughs> Lieutenant Lake, if you could direct your attention to the area that I highlighted earlier, did you see yourself just exit screen right? Yes. Did it appear that you had something in your hand? Yes. You're taking a call? Yes. Uh, on your cell phone? Yes. What was that call? I don't recall. I'm not sure who that call is to. It was from. Does it appear you're on the phone? Yes. Okay. Did it appear that you walked off screen left? Yes. You're still on the phone? Yes. Okay. Lieutenant, are the lights on the at 34 Fairview on or off? They still appear to be off. At this point, does it appear that you're still on the phone? Yes. How's it? At this point, is there anything that changed in the scene? Uh, it appears that there's now a light on inside the home. And at this point, Ms. McCabe has been inside the house for approximately how long, if you could estimate? Three, maybe three minutes. And are you still on the phone? Or have you, gotten on, have you ended that call? I, I can't tell if I'm still on the phone at that point. Does it appear at this point, if you can see, does it appear that you've ended that call, or at least your hands are down by your side? I, I can't tell. OK. You would agree with me that that was, a, a, without counting the seconds, that was about a five minute phone call, or maybe a little better than five minutes? I, I wasn't watching, to be honest. Do you have any idea who you were talking to now that you've seen that? I could make an educated guess, but I don't know for sure. 
Um, you did notice that several minutes after Jim McCabe went in the house, and while you were on that phone call, the lights finally came on at 34 Fairview, correct? Correct. At the point the lights came on, the ladder truck had already gone, left from the scene, correct? The firefighters are all gone. The ambulance has already left and transported Mr. O'Keefe. The paramedics are gone, the EMTs. The fire captain and his SUV, that's gone. Kerry Roberts is gone. Yes. Aaron Reed is gone. Yes. So when the only parties left at the scene are members of the Albert family, Jen McCabe, and the Canton Police Department representatives, that's when the lights inside 34 Fairview finally came on. Okay. Is that yes? Yes. All right, working on day seven. <laughs>